In my previous video, I gave a few criteria for what organizations consider when they're evaluating whether a group is a cult. And so after giving a few of the, the drier arguments, now I'm going to get into more of the personal stories as to why I think Orthodox Judaism is a cult. Years ago, I decided to see what it's like to get sucked into an Orthodox Jewish group. So I posed as a secular Jew and let the Kiruv organization, that's Orthodox Jewish Outreach, I let the rabbis sort of rope me into the learning experience. I spent a year learning full-time in an ultra-Orthodox Jewish community uh, before moving away and then studying with a different community but kind of part-time, sort of at arm's reach. To this day, I spend two to three nights a week studying with the Orthodox rabbis over different topics, again, all undercover stuff. Occasionally, one of them finds the truth about me, and inevitably, I get kicked out of the group, and then I have to find another group. This has happened several times so far, and I assume it's going to keep on happening again in the future. But the information is too important, so it's still worth it. So far, uh, so far, my most notable experience has been uh, one, one modern Orthodox rabbi who considers himself the most liberal and tolerant of Orthodox rabbis in the area of, uh, when he found out about my beliefs. At first, he seemed kind of intrigued. We talked for a few hours. About my beliefs regarding God and Israel and the public education system and other things. He was absolutely shocked to see that a fellow Jew could actually believe in Jesus as God. Uh, he asked me about my feelings about Jews for Jesus, and I said, I like the or intentions, but I just don't think they're all that successful. Well, about a week later, I got a phone call from him, and he said that he would just not allow me to attend his lectures anymore, his shirim. And he pretty much wanted to break all contact with me. So I asked why he seemed to have such a change of heart. Uh, the rabbi said that he could not allow me to sit and listen in on the lectures because I might in the future encounter a secular Jew and use all of this information I learned from the rabbis to persuade this secular Jew to accept my beliefs. So several things are of note here. First, this modern Orthodox rabbi has been known to invite people who are not Orthodox and have no intention of becoming Orthodox to dine with his family or to spend the night on the Sabbath uh, or to attend events with him. He is sharply critical of groups like Chabad, which is very outreach focused. He brags that he accepts all Jews for who they are and provides no pressure for them to conform to his beliefs or practices. Uh, this is the rabbi who would not even let me listen in on his lectures because he said, oh, you might use them against this. Second, it was during his phone call where I heard him repeat so many of the slogans that I had heard a bunch of times from Orthodox Jews, just repeating them word for word. The rabbi was not really thinking for himself, but was sort of spouting the propaganda that he'd been force-fed when he himself went to yeshiva many years ago. Thirdly, his attitude toward letting outsiders know his beliefs resembles Gnosticism and other secret societies more than it resembles a really defensible belief system. I've studied under Eastern Orthodox theologians, letting them know my beliefs very openly, and they had no problem teaching me. I'd studied Roman Catholic theology under very theologically conservative Roman Catholic theologians, and they openly welcomed me, even though they knew I had major issues with Catholic theology. Reformed Protestants have let me study uh, their theology, even though I'm not Reformed in any sense. And even atheists and agnostics have let me sit in on their organizations. They, they don't care. They're happy if I'm going to read atheist authors like Richard Dawkins. Uh, in all cases, I asked whether they were afraid I could use their beliefs against them, and they pretty much universally responded that if I use these teachings to criticize them, uh, at least I'd be criticizing an accurate view of their views. People who have confidence that their belief systems are true are not afraid of criticism. Alfred Planiga has phoned many of his colleagues, telling them that if he wanted clarification on what they believed so that he could more accurately criticize them, the colleagues were very eager to oblige. They believed that their beliefs had the best arguments for them, and would happily change those beliefs if better arguments came out. I agree with this sentiment. I would be too happy to accept the belief system and even lifestyle of some Orthodox organization like Chabad or Aish or Jews for Judaism if their rabbis could present me with strong enough arguments. But I don't think the feeling is all that mutual. 